Welcome, everybody, to episode 20, 20 of that. the Lure Fishing Podcast. I keep wanting to say Tales from the Tackle Shop. It's tr- <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my whole life is a life of podcasts that absolutely no one listens to. But <laughs> we have a lot of fun doing this. That's the main thing. It thing, is fun, it? actually. I had yeah. loads of fun last week. It's brilliant. Well, Tom's back again, which is brilliant. So Tom's going to be a kind of a, like a, a semi-permanent fixture. I nearly said semi then, but that would be even worse. Hey. <laughs> that, would, hey, that would have been wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, so we really crack it on with this, and things are progressing really well. We've got loads of people who are going to help us out. That's awesome. Yeah, they're going to be here. One or two people are going to help out end of this season, and we're really going to crack on, aren't we, like a, a, a magazine yes. for season three. Charlie's still he's still in the, in the ether. Um, we have a... Fishing organised for episode 22, so keep an eye out for that one. That'd be nice. Good. But before we go any further, you've been doing some homework. I did some homework, yes. Yeah, I'm taking this a bit seriously. So, results. So, taking on from the podcast that you normally do, which is very match related, I thought, you know what? There's been kayak fishing in Langorse last week. You've been reading Facebook. Yes, I've been just trawling Facebook, looking for what's happening, and... So the Langhorse Kayak Fishing European Championship, or Predator Hunt, uh, was won by Ian Pickering. Second was David Jacobs. And third was Tiberio Nika. And the competition was two pike and one perch. And as ever, that sounds really easy. But talking to all the guys and seeing all their posts and everything else, it really wasn't. So congratulations on that. And then that leads on to tomorrow is the Kayak Angler of the Year. Um, which final. Is come, final. Final, final. Final one or final, final one? Final. I think it's final one. But if anyone can confirm this, that would be awesome. <laughs> right, we'd have to fess up, won't we? <laughs> so to, Tom Tom turned up to my house actually wanting a gold star because he's, he's, he's done loads of homework and I'm really impressed because I've done absolutely bugger all as per normal. You've been fishing. I ha- well, we have got a queue, which we're going to mention in a minute. Yes, and yes. I, I have actually yes, been have, fishing yes, today, yeah. so I've come back. <laughs> Tom's turned up with posting notes going, right, I'm ready. And uh, he's got the land course results and I've gone that's a bloody good idea and then we're I'm thinking right it's coyote kayak angler of the year yep. hence coyote and I'm convinced it's sponsored by Hobie UK which is Steve Beard who's from Sure Thing and I'm convinced Dave Morris organizes it and but we're crap that's about as far no. as we've got now so. all I know is I know it because of the Pittsford kayak grand slam which is one that I sponsored um What's that? A couple of months ago now. Yeah, uh, and it's all part of these, uh, all part of the competition. So they're all stages for qualifications. I think they ha- well, they have uh, different um, uh, comps on at yeah. different times of the year for this coyote, and it all adds together. This is what I think happens. Dave Morris, wherever you are, contact us Let's and know. put us straight, <laughs> and we'll try. We'll mention it in one of the next episodes because we're we're recording loads off the off the cuff here, yeah. which because you'll see what's happening later. But there's, there's lots going on. It's, it's really quite exciting. <laughs> But, um, yeah, we're not quite sure if we've got it right. We think we have. I'm pretty sure we have. But that's how confusing competition fishing is, which is in the UK. It's not just that, mate. We haven't actually read things properly as well, which is probably, <laughs> probably more, the, more to the point, isn't it? I tried. I tried, guys. So. No, you did well. You did really well. Right. We are going to go straight into it. My coup. Yes. Yeah. I kidnapped Stephen Collett last week. And he, um, yeah, to be actually... It, what he did, he, we were recording for this Elite Pro video that went out. It would, it would have been last where, Thursday now. Yep. Wednesday, Thursday. So Elite Pro went out on the Wednesday. Uh, mine and my channel went out on the Thursday. Obviously, I'd put both uh, videos together. But for the Wednesday one, I needed some talking head from uh, Justin Grapes, who's uh, the sales guy at Marine Power, who hosted the event. Bloody brilliant. This is one down in Norfolk Board, wasn't it? Yeah, on the yeah. air. Brondo, amazing place. You should see it. Yeah. Wow. They've got little holiday cottages. Well, they're kind of apartments. Anglers can go and use a slip. It's a destination. Oh, right. Des- destination. Destination. Yeah. Is it just called a destination? Is that a key word these yeah, days? Yeah, it is a destination. Yeah. So yeah. you can go there. You can uh, hire the cottages or the apartments. You can go fish. If you just want to go fishing, you can use the slipway. I think that's, that's good. A nominal fee. Yeah. You need to book beforehand that they haven't got a, a honking great big boat in the way. But uh, <laughs> yeah. they're just keen to get people down. So that's really good. And I needed a bit from Steve as well. And to be fair, he, just, he drove all the way from Nottingham here and he was absolutely hooning down. So I managed to get him here. And we've got about 50 minutes now of Steve Collett. Who is he? What's his role? 
And what's his vision for lure fishing? It's good. You need to watch this. This is really good. Cool. Right, guys, I've got a special today. I have the one and only Steve Collett with me. Steve, you have driven like 500 miles to get here today or some crazy distance. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. Where have you come from? Uh, Nottinghamshire today, but yeah, I've uh, messed around with a few cars and uh, swapped this, swapped that. And uh, yeah, and the weather, floods, been through the lot. The rain has not stopped, has it? It hasn't rained, no. No, no it's no. Armageddon. So I really appreciate you driving over. Thank you very much. So, Mate, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been, uh, it's been a long time coming. Long time coming we've actually met each other, so yeah. Yeah, we spoke about this probably in the summer, didn't we? One of the comps. Yeah, yeah, but life gets in the way, as yeah. you know. And I said, if you could make it over, we could do a bit of a podcast. So, there you uh, go. Here we are. We are here. Now, now, I don't really know you. We've just kind of met this summer, I suppose, through seeing each other at comps. And I'd imagine a lot of people um, watching this won't know who Steve Collett is, and they won't really know much about your role. They know you're kind of England team manager, but that's all they will know. Hmm. So I think it would be really cool to start off with. If you could just explain um, what your role is with the England lure fishing team. I've got them all. As, a, as an empire. <laughs> no, it does not an empire. It started off with uh, my passion to want to improve tournament fishing in the UK. We started off on a base... I suppose the Angling Trust uh, joined with Eric Edwards and we had, um, I think it's quite a, a well-known tough time at Rutland with our first home international. Then I had a plan, five-year plan. I wanted to do this, wanted to do that. I had lots of big ideas, but I needed to have some kind of uh, conduit to get good anglers to go fishing. So uh, we started the street fishing, which was a long time coming. I worked a hell of a lot in the background. People don't see this, but there's been lots of trips to different countries trying to sell the concept of street fishing as an exciting thing to get onto the world stage, which is the FIPS ED body. So uh, that came about, and I said, look, I'll take over the management of that with the proviso that I will put another manager in place. I want to see him through. Because an international manager, you're not just sitting there. I don't sit on a throne, you know, and think... Well, I mean, he's the king of the kids, or I'm the international <laughs> manager. You know, it's a, it's nothing like that at all. There's lots of trips, there's lots of work, and at the end of the day, you know, you, you need to put in, you need to put your ego to one side and say, look, if there's going to be somebody picking up that world championship, it's not you. You don't get the plaudits to, for it. It's not going to further my career if we win a world championship. The team, fantastic. It's the anglers. It's those yeah. that do it. But you have to win and lose as yeah. a team. You've, you've touched on loads of things there. So let's just backtrack a minute. So the Rutland uh, home, inter home international is the wrong word because that would be England's top one. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the home one was in 2018, wasn't it? Yeah. So was that your first year as England manager? I've erased it completely from my memory. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I've gone through therapy. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was an eye-opener. And uh, it was just that, it was an eye-opener. But I'm very keen, and people that don't know me, I like to learn. Mm. I've always got time for learning. I'll learn off you, I'll learn off everybody. Yeah. I'm a sponge when it comes to information. Yeah. So in 2018, you took on that role, and we had the international at Rutland. And when when did the, the street fishing come about? What year? The street fishing came about, uh, the first international was two years ago. 21. So, yeah, so we had 21, 22, sorry, yeah, so 22. Uh, so it took a long time for the street and then also the kayak, putting the kayak on the international scene as well. I was going to say, because it's kayaking as well now yeah. as well. So, I mean, it's not just street fishing and boat no. fishing, it's well, kayak as well. Do you know what I've said? I've said, look, wait, you to our governing body, I want to improve. They get my message. They get that I want to improve lure fishing and I want people to go lure fishing. This is not about me. It's not everybody worship at the Church of Steve. This is about lure fishing. And the good of lure fishing and people getting better at lure fishing, trying lure fishing and promoting lure fishing. I bore a lot of people with my passion of lure fishing. And that's all it is, Andy. You know, I might rub people up the wrong way, but there's a lot of passion within me to, you know, to try and get lure fishing going. I was, this is exactly what I was, I don't know you at all and I'm getting to know you. And the, the odd time I've seen you is you've been talking to groups of people very quickly. And now I know what it is. You're trying to get things organised. You're, yeah. you're just, you literally, so passionate about promoting the sport, you, you've got to speak to that person when you're there. You've got to speak to that person when you're there. You've got to speak to that person when you're there. And I go back to when I was in education, the head teacher was exactly the same. They'd come out of their office, bugger me, they had to go and speak to that person, that person. And it just reminded me of someone who just wants to get things organised and working. Yeah. And now I'm getting to know you a bit better. Like today... Well, we're trying to liaise what time you're getting here. You are so busy, it's ridiculous. 
and you're literally trying to fit this in amongst all the other things. Mm -hmm. Guys, it's probably six o'clock in the evening and you've been driving here since two? Yeah, about two, yeah, I spoke been, this morning. Been, yeah. So it was very early, I, get, I was up at four, so getting a fair bit of work done then, uh, trying to arrange a competition that we've got this weekend on street fishing, uh, then liaising with the Italians to sort of have the license for the guys uh, in the street fishing, then getting a day job done. And yeah, but you know, it is for the good of fishing. You've it got is. to have that passion yeah. because I tell you what, if that candle goes out, it'll stop. It'll stop for me as well. But I'm amazed because uh, so you've taken on these roles and you are just pushing the different elements of, this, of our sport. And I think it's amazing. So it's fantastic. That's one. That's my first kind of. Um, that's, that's the first thing I've noticed. It's like wow. And of course, recently you were in Latvia with the boat team. Yeah. Now I think people need to understand this: is you don't get paid for this. No. This is something that you do in your own time, and you put your own money into it, like all the competitors do. And you were just there trying to make sure they can get to there. You're managing it, making sure it goes off seamlessly. You're making sure the guys are. Um, they looked after on the on the on the competition days, all the planning beforehand. It is a thankless task. Very well. I don't know. It isn't thankless because at the end of the day, I'm seeing better lure anglers, and you must see that yourself. You've been around for a long time in the fishing game. We are seeing better lure anglers, and it, you know, it, when I'm eighty odd in a nursing home, I can actually say that I have put bums on seats. But that's the passion coming through again. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. but I have. You know, it's not it's not a it's not a big thing, but. The funding and the people uh, getting the money and the lack of expenses, that's a bone of contention at the moment, I've got yeah. to be honest, because just before I came out to Latvia, there was a, there was a lot of trouble, which we, we'll touch on at a later date. But people think that I'm getting a lot of money. There was a letter, uh, public, it was sent to the Angling Trust, and a letter that I've seen online that said that before the kayak tournament, for instance, that I took my family to Disneyland on the Angling Trust expenses. There's, a, there's also a, an email going around that, get a Range Rover, on the angling trust expenses and I'm paid for all of these trips and luckily I've got a very good relationship with the angling trust I never did have we were always at loggerheads about one thing or the or another but I see their end goal now now I've matured they've backed me and they've said look you know Steve is one of the only managers that's never taken a single penny of expenses and I don't I don't it all comes out of my pocket yeah to well, that's crazy because <clears throat> I know obviously with my contacts in the match fishing world that the match fishing team, they're, they're self-funding. Mm -hmm. they're, an angling, the Angling Trust don't have this money, this pot of gold, to, to distribute like people are, are imagining. So I, I can't, it's like, this is nonsensical. Well, I'll tell you what, one thing, a big misconception about the Angling Trust is that people think, oh, well, they don't do anything. They pay the entry fees to everybody to these FIPCD competitions. Now, they're 1,200 to 1,300 quid, 1,500 quid sometimes. They've got 44 teams. Bloody hell. That's a lot. Of I did money. not know that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't know it, you know. Yeah. So it's a lot of money, and they do work tirelessly to help us do this. We've got a great guy on board at the moment, Steve Fitzpatrick, who used to work at Angling Times. Me and him never used to get on uh, because I was with Anglers Mail, Angling a bit of tribalism, a bit of football hooliganism <laughs> going on with Angling Times, <laughs> Anglers Mail. There was, you know, it was it was just that it was that young young book kind of thing that we were, we were clashing heads. But now I see his goal. He's got a five year plan. We've all got the same thing to improve fishing because if we don't, it's one way down. So I, I always say I'm just trying to constantly learn, push things, but it is, it's not as easy as you think. If anybody wants to do it and take it off my hands, seriously, I'll accept the letter today. I tell you what, just, just talking to you downstairs before we started doing this, just getting an idea of what you do, it's it's mind blowing, really. And yeah. you've got boundless energy to get these things done. It is it's quite it's a passion. It's probably not energy because I do get knackered. You know, so on Sunday, I've got a, a, a there's this elite pro league um, street fishing match. 40 odd people are doing that this weekend, which is quite a lot for a match. There's 40 odd guys going on a match. And today, I had time to just think, actually, I'm quite proud of this because yeah. I was nearly in tears when three people were entering the first competitions. Well, that's progress, but let's get. Let's get on. Let's get on to that in a minute because I still want to explore who Steve Collett is because right. I think it's important that people actually have a little bit of the background. Now, I know that you have a background in match angling. Mm -hmm. So actually, that's is that where you cut your teeth? It is, yeah, yeah. Match fishing uh, to to a point, yeah. Did okay. Well, you, yeah, um, you, you <laughs> yeah. did more than okay. I did so, 
Who who did you match fish for? Which which was your team? I've been with the Trentman. Um, I've been with several teams over the years because I spent a lot of time and I had some great heroes. And the good thing about match fishing is that I had a canal circuit in the West Midlands where I got people like Joe Brennan, Peter Plant, Paul Boothby, people who I could look up to and learn. And it was a it was a time of fishing where it was evolving with poles and everything, every other bit of technology that I could learn. And that was my passion, the learning. Yeah. Then I wanted to win a big competition. I won the big competition. The flame went out of the candles. And the... Well, it's, so the canal bit first. Now, I I film uh, an angler called Simon Willsmore, England oh, yeah. International. Mm. Oh, wow. Phenomenal. He is a phenomenal angler. And we've done a couple of canal fishing videos. And I really like filming on him on a canal because he's quite aggressive for, for canal fishing, but he's quite he's very finessed at the same time. Yeah. So he, he'll have several, several different approaches, several different lines, and he can tell me roughly what's going to happen with the fish at the beginning of the session. Do you know what? He's got it. And I tell you, there's him, there's Will Rayson, there's a lot of good anglers that have got it. Yeah. And I've filmed and wrote about them for 30 odd years through the Angler's Mail, and I've sat behind them for hours and hours. All the best anglers fished with them, wrote about them, filmed them. They've got it. Yeah. I can't tell you what it is, but they've got this thing that can change with the instant. It's like you with pike fishing. You might say, actually, I think there's going to be one there. Nigel Williams, Neville Fickling, Gabby Banks, all great pike anglers have got it. Yeah, it's not so much, it's it's like, well, it's location, but you, you, sometimes you get with a lure, you get, you know, you couldn't tell somebody, but you just think, I've got to retrieve that in that way to get a better response. Oh. But watching Simon... Yeah, he can tell whether they've come up in the water, when they're going to come up, how much to feed, how little to feed. He knows he's got it. Yeah, and his preparation, that's mm. one thing with all these anglers. Um, I, I spoke to Catchmore Media. Oh, Tom Scully. Yeah. And I said to him, who, in your opinion, is the best angler that you've seen? And I'm going to get this wrong. Scott, Scott. Alan Scottthorne. And I said, why? He said, he is the most prepared angler I've ever seen. Meticulous. Meticulous, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's all these 1% stacking them up. I'm a massive believer in that. Yeah. Huge. But going back to the canal fishing, do you think that your enthusiasm for match fishing the canals gave you that extra 1%, 2% for these matches that you did as a, as a match angler? Because... The finesse you need on a canal is the next level, isn't it? It's kind of even more special with your ground bait and everything that you have to do. I think fishing, you get into a groove, a rhythm of doing it constantly and naturally, and then the confidence exudes when you do that. So if you go to, at the moment, Rutland, very few people who touch you on Rutland, you could go on a day and it'll just come out because of what you're doing on there and you're fishing all the time. And... I was quite a successful young man. I, I made a lot of money, so I'd retired very early. So I was allowed to fish five, six times a week. So it was all natural to me. But I was meticulous on preparation only because I'd learned of the best. Yeah. So I'd have everything ready. Yeah. Absolutely everything. And in times when people wouldn't have a, a wallet of hook lengths, I would definitely have 10 hook lengths, 10 top threes. I'd have everything. I'd, I'd have everything ready. So it was, I got into a rhythm of everything. And then you just get into that rhythm of fishing. Of catching yeah. fish. That's what amazes me. So, I mean, a lot of people watching the Lure Fishing podcast just want to go fishing, and that's fine. Yeah. And they'll set rigs up when they're there, and that's absolutely fine because it's just fishing. But when you get to this, when you do comps, everything has to be spot on, and you need to have spares of everything, and even th three or four th spares of things. So, yeah. if something goes wrong, you're not messing about trying rigs, you're picking up another rod, it's ready to go. Um, Everybody will say, when I've, when I've been match lure fishing with them, Say you chuck, I know people won't do it. Say I'm chucking a two and a half gram tungsten jig head, chucked it in, got in a snag. That hook is off. That's gone for me. It's gone completely. Because I try to tell people so many times, doesn't matter, you could have a mega bass rod, mega bass reel, the top braid, everything. But the most important part mm. is that £1.75 thing. You've just blunted yeah. and not been bothered to change. And the next important so, thing is if you're, if you're using a, an attachment, it's that. Then it's yeah. your leader. And I'm meticulous with people that go with me. They, 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 that's one thing I've carried on, and I do make sure. I like the little percentage. If I could, you know, they say 100 bad things, a percent on top, you know, I've got 100%. So yeah. I just look at those kind of things and break them down into... Yeah as many things as I can, covering water. I even got data on, say, uh, lure fishermen with their EFT, their effective fishing time. Where I've got charts of Tom and Kev where actually they're casting, you think, oh, that's it, they're fishing all day. But they've fished for 60 minutes, 60 minutes timer on the camera, probably had that lure in the water, 42. Can you improve on that? And I have 43. Can you improve on that? 45, 47, 
All marginal gains while, yeah. that, while that losing the water. Do you think that's come from the canal fishing background? It's come the from the mattress fishing background. background. Well, the most canal. definitely. Yeah. And, and the competitive nature. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. I rub people up the wrong way because I've got this competitive nature. But it is just that, you know. I don't hold any malice to you, but in a competition I do. As bad as it sounds. Sorry, I, but I do. You know, it, it's a competitor. It's a, and you should to me as well. I, well do, I don't mind that. I gave you an analogy when we were again, talking downstairs. I used to play a lot of rugby and I can't, couldn't pay, play friendlies. Yeah. Because as soon as you walk over the white line, it's hit or be killed. Yeah. But kind of rugby, and it wasn't the biggest. Yeah. So you had to be even more aggressive. Yeah. And that so, line. Yeah. But as soon as you walk back over it, it, it stops yeah. the game. No, I'm miserable <laughs> back over it. <laughs> yeah. But that's interesting, isn't it? So, you, so people watching this, one of the things I could say if you want to get better at any type of angling is think of the 1%. Totally. Do 10 of those 1%, you've got 10% better already yeah. without even going onto the water. Yeah. It's just those little things that you can do. Okay, well, we're, we're whizzing through this because obviously um, Steve's got loads of things to do, but also we don't want to kind of bore Steve to death. But I do want to mention one thing. So just go back to your match fishing. You were a Division One champion at one point as well. I was, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. must have been an amazing feeling. It was, it was, yeah. So tell yeah, us a little bit about that story. Oh, I drew an absolute plum peg. In fact, I told everybody when I drew it that everybody else... Every 500. You told them. Told all 500, <laughs> I might as well go home. Because <laughs> I'll win this. And uh, what, Where was it? It was on Collingham, 1A, on the Trent. My lovely river. My uh, a river that's very close to my heart. Seven in the Trent. I'd fished a lot on. And, uh, yeah, I knew. I knew. But what? two hours into the match, I didn't, because I hadn't caught anything. What did you catch? <laughs> no, I was told to go for Bream by a guy who won Division 2. So, oh, the Bream will be there. They just weren't there. Typical fishing, they'd moved. So the gremlins get in. Yeah. And then I suppose competition experience, yeah. come on, let's just go for it. And uh, luckily I got the big stuff with me, so I was able to cast a long way to catch a lot of barbel. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was, uh, it's nice. So it's, winning competition is good, but in in a way it, it starves my hunger. Does that make sense? So let's go back to what you said to me five minutes ago. See, when you won that, something changed. Yeah. So what happened? Flame went. Gone. Gone. That's what I wanted to win. I totally wanted to win that. And yeah. my passion around until I see lure fishing, which is, is going in the wrong way, is going the right way, sorry, in the, in the UK, from the wrong way, we're on an upwards, upward curve. People start to notice England, and we get a lot. It's funny lure fishing is, you know. It, I've always said the same analogy. If you tell me you're any good at boxing, I'm going to find out in a few minutes. Simple as that. We'll find out. If you tell me you're any good at golf, we'll find out on the golf course. Tell me you're good at football. We'll find out on the football field. Tell me you're good at fishing. I've got to take it. Do you know what? This is bizarre. Funny. I've mentioned this on the Lure Fishing podcast before several times. This is why I love playing cricket and rugby, particularly rugby. Well, it's cricket quantifiable. as well. You would find your level very quickly. Yeah. Because if you were getting smacked about on a rugby pitch, you wouldn't play for the first team the next week. No. You'd be in the second team, yeah. third team. If you were very good, you'd be playing at another club. And it is so easy for these sports to see it and to do it. Yeah. Whereas fishing, it gets lost within it. People can talk a good game and they can do 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 And it's just like, so, yeah, that's an interesting point. Well, that, this brings us on nicely then, doesn't it, to the Elite Pro League? Yes. Because, well, again, I know a little bit because you've told me, this is one of the reasons why you came up with this idea. So let's, let, rather than me talk about it, as an England team manager, you want to see who the better anglers are rather than people tell you. Yeah. So how did the Elite Pro League come about? Well, as I became England manager, I, because of my competitive nature, and I am a miserable bugger, I, I wasn't getting a lot of friends. Is that because you're a Wolves fan, though? No, no, it's just because I'm a miserable <laughs> bugger. Similar as that. No, I, I, I'm very, at a, at a very early age, doing Angler's Mail, doing different things and winning various things, I learned very quickly that, look, Steve, you either take it as a popularity contest or a contest against yourself. Which would, what, how do you want to better yourself? Do you want to be better, more popular, or do you want to be a better angler? I want it to be a better angler. Simple as that. Right. And it rubs people up. It does. Yeah. And I apologise for that because I, I don't want to. I don't want to be combatant or I don't want to come across abrasive to everybody. But I will argue a point, and I can stand by those points. So when I joined as an England manager, I had the cleanest arse in fishing. <laughs> I did, because I was getting phone calls of people that used to hate me. All right, Steve, yeah, you, you've lost weight. <laughs> you're working out. <laughs> wow, you look like you've been on holidays. You look great, Steve. 
<laughs> no, to, to, that's exaggerating a little bit, but that, that's what you got. You know, I had a lot of these things, and um, I, I had to see through that. And the first thing I did was wrote off a lot of friends uh, or people that I went fishing with. So I had to write them off and say, right, you know, I can't be in contact with you. I can't be in contact with you. Did you find that quite tough? Yeah. I did. Well, no, because I'm a miserable bastard. So, so, <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, I, it, you had to clear the decks in a way. Totally. Yeah, totally. But it's to want to better myself. And that's what people don't get. I want to, I want to be top. I want to be the most successful. Yeah, but this is, a, this is, ever. so this is not bettering yourself as a competitor. This is bettering yourself for the team. It is. I can still be a competitor. Don't get me wrong there. And you might take that the wrong way. People might watch, watch you might take that the wrong way. I can still compete and I still fish a lot. No, I think the only thing is, I do is I don't take a camera with me anymore. I think this is, for me, this is quite difficult to get my head around in a good way because I can see how I'm competitive as an individual and I can see how I'll be competitive within a team. But you're not, you're the person doing the stuff for the team. So it's even... Oh, I've lost... I'm not the lead singer of the band anymore. Yeah. I'm the roadie. I'm the bloke who fishes the That's coffee. That's quite an achievement yeah. to get your head around that. It's tough. It is tough because yeah. I am still ultra competitive. Yeah. But I've had to completely wipe that for the good. Of the sport. Of fishing. Yeah. yeah. That is it. That is it. It's to it, your it, credit. It really good. is. Well, I don't know. Somebody... And I'm not trying to clean your ass. No, I know. <laughs> Just be you're honest. <laughs> We're talking... <laughs> Oh, let me get that brown bit no, there. No, look, look, fishing, especially lure fishing, people get a lot of opinions based on what they've heard. Yeah. And character assassination is at its highest in lure fishing, I'll tell you that now. It's a horrible thing to say, but it is. Everybody, you're saying that people don't know me, you could go on a forum and there'll be 60, 70 people giving me pelters that I've never met in my life. And I've said to you, five people I have in my phone book who I'll go fishing with and have a good time fishing. I want to keep it that way. My professional side is to improve the sport and get back onto the elite league. The only way you could choose a good angler is if they told you. Yeah. They didn't have a win, 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 loss, win, win, win record. It was, oh, he's good. He must be good. He's on YouTube. Oh, he's good. He's doing this. He's doing that. It had to go on. You couldn't do it on merit. So we, we formed a league and then by winning it's different matches, you get 12 points, 9 points, 8 points all the way down. And then we'd have this league at the end of the year where everybody can see. Fishing becomes quantifiable. Yeah. And you yeah. will see in five years' time, you'll see how it'll change because those names will be there that are there around about now and they'll be there on merit. They're not there on anything else. Yeah. Not kissing my ass, not doing YouTube, not doing anything. They're there on merit. If you don't want to do that, I don't mind still fish competitions because it's the greatest way of getting better at anything. Last week's podcast, Tom Moyer came up. He with doesn't me. like me, Tom. So. That's shocked us. <laughs> no, see, we, we must have had a row about something over Tungsten, I think it was, in the World Championships, where they said Tungsten, it's only going to be allowed as Tungsten. And somebody told him, oh, Steve won't let you use Tungsten. I don't know. I've never met Tom. Might be a fantastic guy. But yeah, that, he's a lovely guy. Yeah. That's, a, that's a thing, you know. I bet we could get on. Oh, but until, totally. yeah. until you've met somebody exactly, and yeah. pressed the flesh, yeah. then uh, there's a lot of character oh, fascination. And I think in us. lure fishing, the base is so small that we have this nonsense going on. In bigger sports where the base is massive, it doesn't exist so much because there's, it doesn't work because you can't be like that. But um, going back to what he said, he was, he was he, Dave Good mentioned this as well to me a few weeks ago about having like leagues. So out there, I'll call Selena, we might have a Wednesday night league yeah. with 10 guys in kayaks. Yep. And Tom was saying the same thing. He goes, like, not blowing my own trumpet here, but UK Lure Series, I, I like to enter it because it's, it's right on my street catching big fish. And he goes, there should be like perhaps two or three levels of it because cause most of the guys can't catch what you can catch. Well, they're not, they're not into it. And he said, it, does it put people off? So he was actually saying, let's expand it and have different levels of leagues. So like the Elite Pro, maybe there's an Elite Pro League and maybe there's an uh, Elite League underneath it. I'm all for working with everybody that wants to improve fishing. But to do that, we have to get the base a lot yeah. bigger, don't we? Yeah. But um, it was everyone's saying the same thing, but they're using a different language for saying it, I think. Well, some people are saying the same thing. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I think, I think there's, it's, it's caused division. There's people that what, you get find it. the Elite Pro has? Yeah. There's people that get it, like Dave Good, that you just spoke of. He's fished bass in America. He sees the picture. He puts a positive slant on everything, and that's what we need. Because yeah. I could take ten people out of lure fishing, eight of them will have a negative slant on it, but still want to go. 
I don't get it. We need the positive. We need a positive vibe. Yeah, it? we yeah. really do. So the league's divided. So there's people that probably are on the fringe thinking, "Well, I'm not good enough to be on that league." If that was me, I'd say, "Well, I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to be. Just get better. I'm going to be. Yeah, I'm going to fish more, and I will be up there, and yeah. I'll strive to get up there. That's what I'll do." And then there's the other people that say, "Well, I don't want to do competition fishing." Not a problem again, no. as long as you live. I, I don't mind. And people seem to think that, that I've caused this division between people that don't want to fish and people that want competition fish. If you want to pleasure fish, pleasure fish. Perfect. Do it all day long. I love it. I can't see where this divide comes from, being personal. I'm personally, perfectly honest with you. I, but you're a competitor, though. Yeah, so perhaps I don't see it. So I took a, a guy reached out for me two months ago called Finlay to go coaching. So I do a little bit of angling coaching. I won't do guiding, but I do coaching because what if I... Put someone on a 20 pound pike, what's the point of that? But if I can teach someone some basic skills of using big shads so they can catch multiple 20 pound pike over the years of them angling and they stay in the sport, brilliant. So I explained this to him, he said, That's what I want. And that was the flip side. Mm. We just had the most beautiful day. I met a lovely person. Yeah. Um, and we spoke about so many things unangling related. And I basically, we, we looked at his casting technique and we looked at different setups and we tried three different venues. And I think he thought I was bonkers because we went to the Thames initially and it had hooned it down there on the Friday. It was in flood yeah. and I was so disappointed. Mm -hmm. So I said, we're not staying. He went, I'd have stayed here for five different sessions. I said, no, we're going. Well, I said, we won't catch anything. Oh, oh, oh. I said, right, canal. So we went to a canal. We, I had a poach about a pound and a half and that was it. And an old guy told us it had been electrofished to death. Mm -hmm. Bloody hell. So then he goes, I'm a member of a gravel pit. I went, let's go. He went, what? I said, no, we're going. <laughs> went to the gravel pit. He had a mid-double following up straight away. Brilliant. He went, I didn't, oh, well, it was, and it was just, he learned so much from my competitive side, I suppose. Saying, we're I gonna think catch it's a good thing. It is a good thing. But we had a relaxing day as well. And people who aren't into the competitive side, it's brilliant because we were just, like two old mates at the end of the day, yeah. having a laugh. And I, I, I hope he learned a lot. I think he did. I think he really enjoyed it. But, you know, I can't say... Do you enough. know what? What you probably don't realise is you've probably, you've probably had a day's fishing that can stick with that guy for a very, very long time. A very long time. Yeah. That enjoyment. And you get... There's no other sport where you can sit and speak to another man for eight hours. Fishing the tool, which allows men... I'm not being sexist here, but we, we are crap at talking. Mm. About anything, aren't we? The, yeah. An average man is pretty shit about talking. Well, there's crap at talking, you're just being plain miserable. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is a difference. No, a I'm great not... tool yeah. to sit on the bank on a boat, sometimes not cast for half an hour, hour, talk about home life, this, that, yeah. the other. And it kind of just facilitates this space that we can do this. And I find it's great sometimes to go with a complete stranger. Sometimes you don't want to spend any time with them. Yeah. But sometimes you just get this link. And it could be somebody that you would never normally in life approach because you just don't want to go and talk to them. But, you know, you pay me some money, I'm taking him coaching. We had, yeah. But we had this. I like the coaching thing. It's good. I don't do very often. But... <clears throat> no, I like the coaching more than going. Well, the Elite Pro League, as it was set up, as I say, there's this league where it's going to be like the top 10 every year. In the street fishing, there's going to be those top 10 and they go into a secret final to win £2,000 because I'm big on getting money back into into fishing oh. i want cash is it that secretive that you shouldn't have told me now and then you won't know the venue you won't know i'm not telling you the venue oh so, so they get no, they they're going to be told three days before the final so they can't go and well no. they, yeah so it's going to be the best of the best that's a good idea yeah yeah so they're not going to know the, the final and then hopefully as it's whittled down to 10 we can televise it because televise it this is hard slog i've got lots you, of people in, big in into the, in this the, yeah 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 we've got a lot of people in that industry and i'm always pushing it to the point that, that people have just shut the door on me now they're bored with fishing, just just totally bored with fishing. But I've still got the passion, so I'll still keep going, still keep going. And as as you're sp speaking to Dave Good, you know, this kind of enthusiasm works. This yeah. The 40 odd guys fishing this week has yeah, made that's... me proud because only a year ago there were three. That's brilliant. Then there were five. And I could have cried because I was coming back from America. As you know, I was traveling a lot to and from America on these tournaments, and I was coming back and thinking, I've just done a tournament with 400 people. And I've got three men just moaning about they haven't caught a perch. I go to Sportfish Masson every year, which is a big sport fish yeah, yeah, fair yeah. in Sweden. Yeah, talking to Stefan Trumstad about how the state of play, how um, pike fishing was in Sweden. And it was 15, 20 years ago, it was as it was here, I'd say even two or three years ago. Majority of people were going 
They're based in Sweden. And he said, suddenly, the Swedish people started to go back to how they used to be. They spent an inordinate amount of time on their summer cabins in the summer, funny enough. <laughs> but they have a second home, and they went back to exploring the environment. And then they had a, an influx of um, mainly American business coming in, the boats, and he said the lure fishing just took off. Mm. And then it became trendy to have a beard and tattoos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're kind of that yeah, side yeah. of things. And now they have 1.6 million people go fishing and 0.8 million play football. Now, that's, mm. that's why the outdoor culture and the fishing in Sweden and Scandinavian countries is booming. And that's why we see all these YouTube productions so we've got Canal mm. Gratis, yeah, all those yeah, guys. Yeah. So they, they've really got on the back of this. Yeah. And they rode the wave. Yeah. And it's been amazing, hasn't it? And yeah. um, so people like Frederick Julian was pushing the yeah, street yeah. fishing in Rotterdam, yeah. with Gunky. Uh, that's Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's trendy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've so, read well, yeah. So <clears throat> I can see what you're trying to do now is trying to bring that over. And also youngsters are more likely to go street fishing initially yeah. than get on a boat and go to Graf and Rutland. Or fly fish, you know, they because they just need a rod, rucksack, a couple of lures. It's the easiest thing to do. You can get somebody to drop a drop shot down the side of the canal and catch a perch, get that electric shot, that excitement straight away. Easiest thing to do. Not saying it's easy because everybody would be winning competitions if it was that easy, but there's something in it. The, the thing about street fishing is I love all kinds of fishing, but the street fishing is your environment is constantly changing all the time. You're meeting from nutters to nice people. Nice canal boaters to nutcase canal. You, it, it's just a myriad, a great mosaic of people that you're seeing while you're fishing, and it, it, it is good. And then you get onto other forms of fishing. Kayak fishing is seen as that is like the trendy sport now. Guys with guns that can, not real guns, <laughs> with <laughs> muscles that can paddle a kayak and get to these places, even to the point that the kayak guys now have come on so much, they can compete against two in the boat at yeah. Rotland and Grafham. The technology, how they come in with the boats, and they're good anglers. Yeah, so they're not they're not failed boat anglers. Yeah, these are good anglers in kayaks. And I'm not giving too much away, but I may have made a purchase. But we're not going to explore this any further. That's for next year. Mm. I'll talk to you about that. So yeah, <laughs> and we'll talk to you about that soon. But no, you, you know, my my passion going back to this elite pro league is to get people fishing. Yeah, there's a competitive. Um, I want to see a quantifiable list of anglers, the Premier League of fishing, where I can see these guys. And who knows where that'll take us. You know, at the moment, it's a non-profit organisation. Uh, the, the money that goes in goes out in cash prizes. And I want to try and keep that up. Because I think, I think it's good when people are travelling all this way to fish a canal, that if they're caught two metres, it's been a really tough day, that they get 200 quid is a nice bonus, down to like 50 quid, or put fuel in the car. Match fishing... It's done all the time, mm -hmm. and that's part of it. Yep. And it's totally accepted. And it's like you said, it, it actually gives the guys, not that you should need this extrinsic motivation to, to do better, but they, they view it, let's pay for my bait and a bit of yeah. fuel. Yeah. yeah, that's what I want. I want, yeah. I, I want to get that kind of, I want that attitude, which is going to, it's going to promote competitiveness. And people say, no, it's the wrong way to go. We like the friendly competitions. International fishing is not friendly. But that's where Tom Moyer's idea comes in. The friendly competitions are like when you have the midweek maggot drowner matches. Yeah. When they the money's not neither here nor there. It might be five quid just for your peg money. Yeah. And then at the weekends when they have the um, winter leagues going going on. Let me minute. tell you, these 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 what you call these maggot drowners on a week they are fierce though they are. They might give this soft exterior. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. tell you that now. But inside they're fierce competitors. Yeah. 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 But there's there's levels. Yeah. And everyone's. So match fishing has been going on ad infinitum and everyone knows their level and if they want to, they can work up. And in lure fishing, we need to try and get that started. But, but, but what's wrong with what I'm trying to say is what's wrong with somebody coming 50th in the Elite Pro League this year? To me, if he came 47th a year, that's progress. Yeah. And it, that, that's the wonderful thing. That's how you can compete. You can compete and better yourself. Because I tell you what, people starting now at 50th and working their way up, into this top 10 are going to get noticed. They are going to get noticed. They get noticed by me. They get noticed by whoever takes the teams on. They're going to get noticed as competitors. There's, we've got a lot of good street anglers. We've got good squads. We've got fantastic kayak anglers. We've got the best in the world, world champions. Yeah. You know, we, we're building. It's a, it's a block to build. And I want to ride this wave and keep building. That's what you've got to have the time. You've got to have the time. You've got to have the passion. 
and you've got to go for it. You've got to give 100% in this. Well, you've certainly got the passion and you, you make the time somehow. Um, if, before we finish, can you tell me your kind of, your target for the Elite Pro League looking forward four or five years or is that still like a... a no, we've got a plan. There's four or five years. So I've brought in some good stuff. <clears throat> uh, we've got some good guys that have joined us. Dave Good. I'm trying to get a street guy on board at the moment and Dale Hunter that's been... He's been working with the street team and that, that, that's been a plan. I'm trying to get him into the management side. Same as Dave. We're all trying to work our way up. You've got to have a five-year plan. It doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. Yeah. It doesn't. So I want to see the elite league take off. Then I want to see it as the established league, trying to get it accredited with our governing body. <clears throat> Other governing bodies are ready to take it on. I spoke to Highland this week. They really want to come over and see how it's done. So with my school teacher hat on, is that the, sport, uh, the sports council? That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah sports council Ireland, yeah. yeah. I had a call in the week, yeah. so they want to come over and see how it's done. They want to start to adopt this. Yeah. So it's, it's taken off. I've got Portugal, Italy... They all want to adopt this thing, so they've got like a league. Just quickly, so everyone understands, this is this. So the sports council is kind of is the regulatory body that identifies the governing bodies for each sport in this country. Yeah. So it's irrelevant. Sport England. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. irrelevant. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's called sport. Yeah. It was the sports yeah, council. That's yeah. Right, yeah. Sport England. So that's the group you're having to go through to get the elite pro. Well, England Trust have to go through Sport okay. England, and I want it to get some governing accreditation, yeah. so we can start to say, right, this is the body, and then year two. We're actually going to appoint accredited coaches or guides. So people that are in the top ten will then go through. I, I've, I'm paying, it's a lot of money. I'm trying to get a paper done. So you sit an exam. You sit an exam to become an elite pro guide. In that exam will be practical stuff about lure fishing because normal coaching doesn't teach you lure fishing. So I want to know if I get a treble hook in my hand, the first aid aspect of getting that treble hook out. Because if you've only done match fishing or just normal first aid, you don't know. And there is a high probability. You can make it specific to lure fishing. To lure fishing. Yeah. Pike grazes, you know, that bleed forever. People just don't know how to handle them. And then the lure fishing techniques involved from either A, launching a boat, a towing a boat, replacing it. That's all in this exam. And when you take that exam, then you'll become an accredited elite pro that guide. That is a brilliant idea. Yes. Um, it's, all, it's all coming together. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got it with the... The guys that do most kind of exams from security exams, um, I forgot what they're called. I've paid them a big amount of money, but I forgot. What oh, I should know this, but I'm not. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's, so, there's, yeah, yeah. So it's a good. They put exams together and yeah. recognise that exam. Yeah. So that's all going on. But again, I've been doing this for over a year trying to get this done. See, I, people will not understand any of this because I don't. I'm yeah. not saying I should, but most people watching the podcast will go, "Wow!" So that's year two. Yeah, year two. Year three is uh, completely selfish. It's going to try to be monetized as it is in America. So we've gone through a couple of years of making no money whatsoever. And How is that selfish? Well, what people might perceive it as selfish. Um, to me, I'm still on year five of the goal where I've got a, a kayak league, a street league and a boat league and everybody's happy and there's mm. 50, 60 people competing with those leagues. When they're all doing that, that's when I'm happy. So the money side is... I suppose over the past year, I'm no longer motivated by fiscal advancement. I have to have something else, and that's my something else. I want to see, I want to see lure fishing grow to a point that all these leagues have got competitive anglers trying to get to number one, number two, yeah, number three. Love it, yeah. So, yeah. So then it will be monetized, like it is in America, and then when it's monetized, it then attracts sponsorship. Yeah. But the sponsorship that I'm going for at the moment isn't getting a lot of takers because I'm not saying, can you send me three packs of rubber lures? <laughs> can you send me this, that and the other? Yeah. I'm asking for 10 grand, yeah. 20 grand, yeah. 30 grand. And I should imagine at the minute they're going, uh, can you show me a reason why we should do this? Yeah, well, they, they see the plan and they're looking at it. Yeah. So, and I've got a lot of people in the industry that have looked at it and thought, actually, and I've seen this week, I've just had a call uh, just as I was coming here, there's people saying, Man, I can't believe how many are up for that street league on Sunday. Mm. That's going to be an amazing event. And it is. And that's my excuse. Because I've got to go down there Sunday, not fish. I've got to do all the paperwork. I've got yeah. to take all the moans. The app doesn't work. I've got no signal. You've got to take that stress. But then I need to sit back on Monday and say, I've just put 40 guys on the bank. Hopefully, they're going to go home and tell somebody, what have you done this weekend at work? Oh, I went fishing. I fished the elite league. Oh, fish, I've never tried fishing. Maybe they go fishing. I've done my job. That's it. Someone's gone fishing. That is it. That's probably the aim. Should I tell you the starfish story? No. Go on, yeah, go on. Go on. I was told, actually, I was 
Talking about Elite Pro, I went down to film the kayak event at, um, at Marine Power. That was a fantastic event. Yeah. All I've heard is good things. Brilliant. I was talking to Pete, who is um, he's not the owner of Marine Power, but he's got a lot of stuff yeah, in yeah. charge. Yeah. And we're talking about giving, giving in life. It's yeah. very important to give. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to get this slightly. He goes, have you heard the starfish story? I went, no. So he goes, right, imagine, a, say, in Miami. We're on a beach in Miami, and there's this lovely big uh, apartment that's on the beach. This millionaire owns it. And he's looking out the window, and he sees this kid running up and down the beach every day, just running up and down the beach. So this millionaire goes, well, I don't know what he's doing, but I'm going to go and have a look. So one particular day, he thinks, right, oh, that kid's there again. I'm just going to go and have a word with him. It's really high tide. He's gone down to the beach and this kid's running up and down and throwing things. And the millionaire goes, hey, son, what are you doing? He goes, uh, and there's loads of starfish that have been washed up on the shore. He goes, son, what are you doing? The kid goes, oh, look at all these starfish. And he's picking them up and throwing them in. And the millionaire goes, you've got no chance. You'll never be able to help all of these. Kid bends down, picks one up, throws it in and goes, I helped that one. Yeah. It, and that's yeah. what we're talking about, isn't it? Yeah. We're not trying to change the world. No. We're just trying to get people into fishing. Yeah, that's it. That's the end game. You know, see, but people could, you know, if somebody was telling me this, I look at it with some cynicism or I used to do, oh, what's he after? What's he after? Wait, prove to me what I'm after. I don't want to sit in a throne. I don't want applauds for being an England manager. I don't want money off you for you going fishing. And I'm not trying to control the world of fishing. I'm trying to get you fishing. Yeah. I can't see where any malice can come from that. I really can't in myself. And I need to take myself away from that, work, which is why I don't do social media. And unfortunately, I don't do YouTube. Well, I don't do fishing on YouTube. I like to learn. I like to still be a student of academia and pick up as much as I can off YouTube on different things. Believe it or not, like it's a great tool to learn. It, it is, yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic yeah. tool to learn. So, but I don't watch fishing. Mate, I've worked for thirty odd years in fishing. It'd be like a plumber watching plumbing videos. Someone asked me the other day about organising events, mm -hmm. and I thought I've done that to death as a school teacher. Mm -hmm. All the fixtures and trips away. I said the one thing I want to do now is go to an event and be one of the competitors and not have to worry about X, Y, and Z. Same yeah. thing. Yeah, Christmas holiday. Yeah, right. So I cut you off. Year five. Elite Pro, did we get to year five? Year five is, that is it. That is when the big money sponsorship hopefully comes in. It's going to be, I'm going to have, uh, there's going to be, in, in America, there's like debenture holders that have this thing. Uh, I've got the first uh, guy that owns part of the Elite Pro League in Dave Good that's going to look after the kayak fishing and he knows the game. He's got the positivity. He's got the passion. He's good for the league and he's got the right ethics, which is a big thing. Got to have them as yeah, well. Yeah. All key components. Yeah. And you've got to have the right goal. So then I've got him involved, I've got somebody else involved, and then I'm after two more partnerships that can bring in a lot of things mm -hmm. to the league. And then the league is going to be after five years, I think it is going to be the fisher mania of lower fishing with £50,000 prize money. That would be awesome, I suppose, also. what One thing you have to consider is now getting access to new venues because one of the things we struggle with in this country mm. is... We're so limited. I mean, we Rutland and Grafham have a lot of comps on. They can't hold any more. And also, R Grafham now is getting too small. So, But we've got loads of waters in the Midlands, Lake District, Scotland, Ireland. Well, I suppose, does that count? Because it's in a different country. But mm. Scotland technically is a different country. But are you now looking to try and open up access to these bigger waters? Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing at the moment. I'm trying to gather data on all of these things. So Warwickshire, this weekend, at the CRT car park in Hatton, I'm gathering data. Now, that data will be 46 anglers coming, 46 anglers paying your car park fee, CRT. Mm. Don't forget that. 46 guys. You need to get them to stop yeah. electrofishing first. Yeah, well, that's another, <laughs> yeah. that's another conversation. Yeah. So 46 guys coming and paying that car park. There may be 46 guys using the McDonald's before they go. There may be 46 guys using the petrol station. Now, I'm gathering all this information and then I'm putting it to the local MPs and saying, look, this is what I bring to your areas each week. I'm working with a, a council at the moment where I've said, look, a lot of people have come in. Yeah. Norfolk, for instance, there was a lot of people coming there, travelling there, the fuel, people going, people it's fishing. To think. And yeah. the economic benefit of people going next year on holiday because they've enjoyed the Norfolk Broad. So we've got something to sell as well. So I want to... It's a business, this is. It is a business. Yeah, and the data yeah. that I'm getting now, I'm providing to people. So I'm not just saying, oh, by the way, we had 40 anglers turn up. Great. No, you're so right. And I'll give you another analogy. So, again, using the little river, little magic river out here, the yeah. old course, the name, is um, it's probably the best winter venue in the country. By far, yeah. And the guys have... The council only allow a certain number of matches because the car park... They have 100 peggers. Yeah. So, obviously, the, the, the locals... 
that this is one thing the locals need to understand. Sometimes the odd angler parks in the wrong yeah. spot because I've done it. Yeah, yeah. we've all done it. <laughs> but these guys come down and practice during the week. And where are they staying? They're staying at the guest houses. Oh. They're using the Weatherspoons, yep. the Curry House, yep. Griffin Pub. Yeah. They're using all and the, the local. Pizza. They, I've they, used it myself. They're yeah. using all the local amenities. These guys are so keen. So if they have eight, nine opens, they're coming down during the week to practice as well. So that's that's not eight. That's sixteen visits. Mm -hmm. They might stay for two days because they're coming from the other side of the country. The Winter League final was held here in Decoy. I don't yeah, know. yeah. So you've got right, yeah. you've got they are down for two or three weeks beforehand, as you would know in your yeah. older hat on practicing, practicing, practicing. You're exactly right. The money brought into the local economy is it's tens if not hundreds of thousands of pounds yeah. in the winter when those businesses are getting nothing. And I don't think local businesses and councils actually grasp this. And it needs people like yourself and I suppose people like myself using the podcast to keep highlighting this fact that it's so important that they appreciate that actually angling it brings in a huge revenue it to does. certain areas of the country at certain times of the year. It does. And uh, now now data is quantifiable. Yeah. I can do that. So I can say the weekend I will have a stick to wield at that local council and say, look, use it or lose it because I'll move away from Warwickshire. I will do. Yeah. Yeah. When the league is big enough, I'll move away. And we can do this with different waters. And one water in particular... We're dealing with the council there. They banned us from fishing uh, because the local council got involved and a yeah, uh, big thing happened. But now I'm showing the the economic viability that we bring in to these places. This is what you missed out on. And if you don't, if you don't start to do something, I'll go to each one of these businesses and say, look, by the way, we're going to have 12 blokes practising and then we're going to book that B&B. &B. They're not coming. Why are they not coming? Speak to your council. So I'm trying to build up as much as I can with a stick to wheel, not just a case of he said, she said, or I saw this on Facebook. I mean, quantifiable saw this. data, quantifiable data, and that goes back to the elite pro league picking the best anglers for the quantifiable England team. data. Quantifiable if data. you're up there, you're up there, and I think it's good for manufacturers as well because they could they, they get 100 emails. I've been there myself when I said, oh, I've got this guy, I've had one this week of a guy who, who said in this email that I've seen that when he worked for Rapala, they only sold 50 quids worth of lures. Since he's been using Rapala, they sell £50 million pounds worth of lures. He sent that to me. And I just thought, what the... F but they're getting this all the time. Mm. They're getting it, and then they pick them up, and then they pick up this angler. Then this angler then portrays something on another angler, and it's all wrong from the start. We've got to grab it by the balls now and start again, start afresh. So if they're in that top ten, they know what they're on about. Yeah, They know what they're on about. <coughs> Consistency, people. authenticity. Yeah. yeah. If they're not in the top ten, get that's better. for you. That's Get better if you want to do it, yeah. yeah. Because I tell you what, I am not taking golf lessons off somebody that plays off a 28. <laughs> no way. I'm not going to take footballing yeah. lessons off Big yeah. Dave that plays down the pub once a year yeah. at a charity match. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. And you know, yeah. you, you need professional coaching. If you want the body to get better, you've got to have some form of professionalism. You're exactly right. Well, we've got, I mean, the quantifiable data cannot be argued against. No. It's there. No, it's it'll hard. be there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you fished all those matches and you've won all those matches and you're the top of that league, you've done something right, mate. Yeah. You, you you seriously have. You fished yeah. well, and you're up there. So yeah. anybody that I think appears in the top fifty has shown that they've done something. And yeah. if they want to improve themselves, that's the key. I want you to improve yourself. Go out and do it. I don't want to shout at you. I don't want to say you're rubbish because you're fifty. Go out and do it. Yeah. I'd love to start again at fifty and watch myself rise. I'd love to do it. The only way is up. Well, not the only way, but it's, you just you can use it as a barometer, can't you? So year one, I'm there. Year two, I'm going to set myself a target of this. Yeah. So, yeah, and it, it would be yeah. I could see this. It's I think if you'll know because you've done the big fish game. If you set your sights on catching a PB perch, there's only one way you can go because you know there's a few of us been very fortunate enough to catch big fives. It gets boring now trying to chase bigger fish than that. If that is the numbers games, your numbers, and the same with pike with numbers of thirties. It shrinks and it shrinks and it shrinks and it can ruin your fishing. It become mm. a passion and a kind of like yeah. anger into catching these fish. You you can't keep it up. But if you can better yourself every time you go out by going up the league, I think that's the way to go. Exactly right, Steve. We're going to have to draw it to a close because we were going to do twenty minutes, and I bet we've rattled on for nearly fifty. I apologise. No, it's not. No, I, <laughs> and a lot. I hope because one of the reasons I want to get you on, I just want people to know what who you are, what your role is, and what your vision is for the sport. And I didn't know any of this. And I could sit here in, with these mics and talk to you for hours about this because it's fascinating. And it's opened my mind to what 
who you are and also what you're trying to do. And I'm not trying to clean your ass. No, I'm no, just no. being honest. Well, and, I hope, know, and I hope people watching this will go, bloody hell, I didn't know that. Because that's why we try and do this podcast, is try and give across uh, an honest... Well, I'll tell you why I don't do po podcasts, because I, I'm not in a popularity contest. I've got to be honest. It's not my aim. It really isn't my aim. As lovely as it is, it's not my aim. I'm not trying to please people. Mm. I want a bigger pot than that. And if I'm to be shot down for that, then shoot me down. But the only way you can talk about this with passion is if you know what you're talking about. Yeah. That is the only way. And yeah. it'll come through. You'll be able to tell if I'm full of shit or not because you see the passion that people yeah. have. And if they want to do it and make it, make it happen, you've got to do it. You've got to say what you're going to do. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. You can see it. it's happening. And lure fishing is getting better. And the lure anglers are getting better. That's the good thing. They are getting better. It's amazing. It is, and yeah. it's, it's a great sport to actually be involved with at this moment in time because it doesn't matter what level you want to do or where you're at. It's just, it's a crest of a wave. We're, we're, there's lots of things happening. Yeah. It's exciting times. We've come a long way. We've come a long way from when I started trying to sell wooden repalers at the Tuckle Exchange in Walton on Thames in the 80s, 90s to where we are now. Yeah, we've, come a, we've come a long, long way, mate. Yeah. So, and, it, and it's good. It's good. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to be, I'm proud to be a part of it. And I'm proud to be a part of it. I can see the passion. It's amazing. Yeah. Right. We're, we're going to wrap it up there. Mm -hmm. That's been, thank you for your time. Thank pleasure. you for driving pleasure. over. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this because this was a bit mind blowing for me because <laughs> we, we hadn't set this up at all because yeah. <laughs> just, I said to him downstairs, let's just, you just literally got here with a cup of coffee. Let's just go for this while it's fresh in our mind. You won't tell anybody about that. You've had a cup of coffee and you invited me into your bedroom <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Straight away. <laughs> God. I know, it's been an eye opener. And uh, I'm, all your plans, I didn't know any of those because obviously I haven't a chance to speak to you about it. Yeah. That's Not amazing. many people do speak to me about it because I have got this persona of an ogre and I like that, to be honest, because I, I, I do love... If people give me pelters on the internet... Carry on, because I do like it. You play on it, do you? I do like it. <laughs> I do enjoy it. Uh, I've, I've, we've seen a different side of Steve Connor, an incredibly passionate man. He wants, he's given his time off angling. It's absolutely, it's brilliant to get to know you. Pleasure, mate. Yeah. Pleasure. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this, because this was uh, a bit unique. Thank you very much. You're welcome, mate. I, that was really quite uh, empowering is the wrong word. I don't mean empowering at all. That's really quite enlightening, enlightening wasn't enlightening. it? Yeah. yeah, that was really enlightening. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there we go. Yeah, so that's the plans for Leap Pro over the next few years, and that would be really cool. Right, we've got one more bit to add before we wrap this one up, and it is Bradley. Yes. And he has for us? It is. It's either the Nico or the Neko. Now, if it's in the UK, we're going to call it Nico, but when I've seen it online, I've heard Japanese people talking about it, it's a Neko rig. So there we go. Let's go. Radders, over to you, buddy. Right, this time we're talking about the Nico rig. You can see it there. Nico rig is a brilliant alternative to things like the Ned rig and such, where it's still a stand up bait on the bottom. As you can see there with the nail weight into the bottom of the bait. But it puts the hook halfway up, and you typically want to use a longer stick bait like this one this one's the Molex four and a half inch stick flex and instead of hopping from the bottom as you pull the line it's going to almost I'm going to exaggerate it a bit here but it's going to like fold as you move it and it just gives that like little bit of a different presentation and the perch absolutely go nuts for it you can use any sort of like a stick bait thing you've got the four and a half inch stick flex Focus. I want to see my face. Four and a half inch stick flex. You've got the Z Man Big TRD. One of my favourites here, the Z Man Hula Sticks. We've got stuff everywhere like uh, the FFS five inch finesse worms. They're good for it as well. We can stick them now, weight in the bottom with the bubble top at the top of it. And uh, yeah. Get your long worms out, try to tie up a Nico rig. All you need is some form of nail weight. Like these are the Z-Man Nico shrooms. These are probably your best bet for the TPE style lures because they just push in a lot easier. And then the other style is your pointed nail weight. 
like this. I think this one's actually a 97 tungsten one. Like you can get these into the TP as well, but it's just a little bit more of a fight. So I'd, I just find it much easier to use the Z-Man ones for TPE stuff. But I would keep a lot of these for when I'm using plastic up. And lastly, you'll just need a wacky style hook. Yeah, yeah, wacky style hook. From a lot of sizes, this is a Gamakatsu, Gamakatsu size 2. That's now on the carpet to go in my foot at some point. Yeah, so let us know in the comments below if any of you have used the uh, Nico rig, what's your favourite bait for the Nico rig, or even if you've not, why not? Hi right, guys, so that's all we've got time for for episode 20. It's a, a long one, and I think it's a really good one. Thank it's you. a hell of an episode. Oh, it's chunky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully there's still people here. So uh, there we well, go. Well, guys, if you've got through to the end, one, thank you very much. Two, make sure you like the video. And three, if you haven't done so, subscribe, please. Yeah. And we'll see you in episode 21. 21. Toodles.